So it looks like Alex Pereira's coming down the 185, boys. Okay, it's happening. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen either. Let me be 100% honest with you um, before we get into the weaves on this one. Um, Alex Pereira going down the 185, just so you guys completely understand my, my, my thoughts on this, is one of the dumbest ideas I have ever heard. I am going to put Alex Pereira going down to 185 to fight Drikus up there with Alexander Volkanovsky fighting Islam Makachev on short notice. Completely ruining his chances of becoming a double champion because he decided he was going to be that guy and fight on 10 days notice. That is how bad of an idea this is by Alex here. Because I'll be real with you. Alex Pereira fighting Drigas Duplessis at 185 has to be one of the biggest Willy Wonka golden ticket moments I've ever seen for Drigas. I want you to think about this. We are in a time, no, not even in a time. Drickus has been given an opportunity where the champion of a division, uh, champion of a division above him, a guy who has a bigger name value, a bigger fan favorite, Alex Pereira, the biggest, like, I, I'm gonna say this again, the biggest name in MMA as of right now, and I don't even think that's controversial. That guy wants to fight you in your home turf. Drickus Duplessis, you have been given one of the greatest opportunities I've ever seen. And do not fumble this because you're starting to. Drickus has, has thrown out the idea of Alex Pereira versus Sean Strickland too, and the winner of that gets to fight for the title. No. Drickus, Drickus, I, I really don't want you to be pulling a John Jones on us, and to be fair, you're pretty far away from that. However, um, Drickus... You are being offered one of the biggest fights in the entirety of MMA. You against Alex at 185. Alex Pereira fighting you at 185 is similar to me fighting my little brother in UFC 5 and turning up his damage 200% and putting myself on half health. The superior fighter is going down and handicapping himself to fight you. For what? Now, don't get me wrong. If Alex Pereira beats Drickus at 185, he I, I'll just straight up say it. He's the greatest combat sports athlete of all time. He is. At that point, he is. And let me tell you why I think the UFC is going to bite on this. But before I begin, let me, like, just to confirm, I'm not talking out of, of my ass on this one. Um, Alex Pereira himself says this. And double down later on. I'm focused on my next fight and I'm going to prepare, but you will never know what can happen. So regardless of the result, I want to go down one more time to the middleweight and go for the belt. Hey, Drickus, bring your will to fight me. You can prove that you are better than me. With your public statement, it is easy to make this happen. Shama. Like... I mean, I'm gonna give Alex Pereira credit on this one because he, he, really, he laid it out pretty full proof. Like, I hate when fighters do this. Um, I, I call this the John Jones call out, where he'll call out a fighter, hype up the fight on Twitter, but then say, sow me the money. Brother, you make more money than any other heavyweight in UFC history. Seven million dollars a fight. You actively brag that you're going to make five million against Stipe Miocic, guaranteed. Brother, how much more money do you need? How much more, more Coke Rocks do you need? To fight Tom. But okay, that, that's a different video. I, I gotta stay away from that. It's Alex Pereira and Drickus time. Alex Pereira, I do believe, is gonna go down the middle way. The UFC has had to stop him from fighting certain people. He wanted a trilogy with Adesanya. The UFC sought it down. He was surprised by that. He even talks about that in an interview. He can't believe the UFC just straight up told him, yeah, that fight's dumb. Like, they weren't trying to do that all along. And I do believe they were. If Israel Adesanya beat Drigas Duplessis, I do believe 100% that they were going to plan Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pereira trilogy fight at 205. I guarantee you that was the plan all along. Alex Pereira was probably clued in by his manager, somebody in the UFC, probably Hunter, and he took this opportunity to call out Drigas Duplessis. Alex Pereira is the most important fighter in the entirety of the UFC right now because of something that I'm going to show you in this video. Alex Pereira is a key fighter in not one, not two, but three separate divisions. Let me explain. Alex Pereira is the current champion of the light heavyweight division. We all know that. But right now we have a problem. 
Alex Pereira is now fighting Khalil Roundtree, the number eight guy. The guy who's coming off a win against Anthony Smith, that guy. He's coming off a win from there. Is currently serving a PED suspension and is now fighting for the title off pulling out of a fight. Magomed Ankalaev is borderline just the Bilal Muhammad, a light heavyweight. But people dislike Magomed more than they dislike Bilal, which is insane, by the way. And is also kind of funny, I'm not going to lie to you. Yuri Prohaska is currently the number one guy. He's not going to be able to get another title shot because he's been KO'd not once but twice. Jamal Hill's throwing a fucking hissy fit because he's like, Oh, well, I kicked you in the balls, but you still KO'd me. That's cheating. Craziness. Jan Blahovitz, I don't even know what he's doing. And Rackets is fighting Magomed. The UFC is planning something with these three divisions. Number one, John Jones is the current heavyweight champion. I'm going to keep the John Jones talk to an absolute minimum because I swear I go on just a 15-minute tangent every single time you bring up John Jones. I had my first hour-long video talking about John. I'm going to keep it to a minimum. John Jones is not going to fight Tom Aspinall. They are not going to do that. I will say it over and over again. The UFC never had any plans for John Jones to fight Tom Aspinall. That is why they're so selective with the language they choose for John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. It would be a good fight. It should happen. But they never say it's going to happen. They will never say that. They will not. Dana White's never said that. He's never going to make this fight. Even though we can make Colby Covington versus Leon. Okay. I'm sorry. It ha it it it's like a tick for me. Tom Aspinall is going to be the heavyweight champion of the world. John Jones and Steve Blair are going to retire. The fans are going to be in an uproar. I believed... And I still do have this belief that they were going to use Alex Pereira versus Tom Aspinall to satiate the fan base to make everybody kind of forget that John Jones legitimately just ducked Tom Aspinall entirely and retired. That's what I thought they were keeping Alex Pereira for us because they do not like Magomed. Magomed on Kalayev has wronged the UFC. Okay, he has. He said no to UFC 300 because it was during Ramadan. Whatever. He said no to 303 because he didn't want to fight on short notice. And the UFC is so pissed about this that they didn't even offer Magomed on Kalayev the fight that Khalil Roundtree took because they don't like Magomed on Kalayev trying to dictate fights when he can't sell a fucking pay-per-view. That's the truth. It is what it is. Every major fight that he's ever had, there's some weird stuff around it. The first Johnny Walker fight, weird stuff with the referee, illegal strike. And then you had the Magomed on Kalayev versus Jan Blachowicz fight, which Jan probably won. He did. Um... So yeah, the USC doesn't want to promote Magomed. So they're going to make Magomed fight people that could beat him, but would lose to Alex. Let me explain. While the UFC is going to play light heavyweight while all this is going on, and trust me, I'm going to wrap this back to Drickus, but hear me out. I'm telling you what the UFC's playing. Magomed Ankalaev is going to be fighting Rackets. We know this is going to be happening. In the meantime, Alex Pereira is going to be fighting Khalil Roundtree. He is going to horrifically KO him. Khalil Roundtree looks good when he's fighting people that aren't good at striking. Khalil Roundtree is a monster when he fights people that aren't good at kickboxing. That's just a fact. I'm sorry. It is what it is. It would be a crazy upset if he was able to win. But I think Khalil Roundtree fighting Alex Pereira, it's just fighting... It's going to be like the Johnny Walker fight, but with more power, and he's going to get KO'd. So he's going to beat Khalil. And then Alex Pereira is now probably going to go down the middleweight unless something happens at heavyweight. He'll be out of the picture. The UFC is going to force an interim. They're going to force an interim between Rackets, no, no, between the winners of Rackets and Magomed Ankalaev, hoping that Magomed loses so they can bury him in the rankings, but he'll probably win, let's be real here. And Jamal Hill. That Jamal Hill's going to come into play here. Jamal Hill's one of the few people that is marketable at light heavyweight. It's Alex Pereira, Yuri Prohaska, and Jamal Hill. Those are the top three draws. It is what it is. Jamal Hill can beat Magomed Ankalaev. He can. And I hope he does. Alex Pereira is going to beat Jamal Hill, but he, he's probably going to lose to Magomed on Kalayev. I'll be real there. And they do not want Magomed as a champion, so they are going to make it as hard as possible stylistically for him to fight for the title for multiple reasons. And Jamal Hill's probably going to beat Magomed, and Alex Pereira's going to beat Jamal Hill again. That's, what, that's how it's going to play out at light heavyweight. Middleweight. Drickus, okay? I, I'm going to speak to all my South African fans, okay? You guys are my third biggest demographic in the world, okay? I'm going to speak to you, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Do not let Drickus fumble this. 
I've said like I've said it multiple times during this video. I will say it again. Alex Pereira going down the middleweight to fight your guy is insane work. Like that that like that is legacy building shit for Alex. Drickus Duplessis is be giving the deal of a lifetime. He is fighting a handicapped Alex Pereira. Like the, the, that that is what your guy is being given. And Drickus is like, yo, well, maybe he should fight Strickland and the winner of that should fight me. No! Fight Strickland. Make money. Be a champion. Do what champions do. Defend the title. Make a shit ton of money doing it. Get your pay-per-view percentage up. Do the UFC a favor. Beat Strickland. If they want to offer you somebody else, be like, hey, hey, hey. I'll beat Strickland for you. But hey, um, give me Alex Pereira in South Africa. That is what you need to do. Do the UFC a favor. Fight Strickland. Beat Strickland for him. They don't want him to be champion. They don't. And by beating Strickland, you're doing the UFC a favor. Do the UFC a favor. They're going to do you a favor. Leverage that and get, get you a fight with Alex Pereira in South Africa and get your pay-per-view percentage up. That's all I'm saying. Let me just, like, this is going to sound mean to all my South African fans. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below. Drickus Duplessis versus Alex Pereira in your home country is probably the biggest sporting event that you guys have ever had. Let's be real here. It is. I know you guys are big, big in the rugby. I don't know enough about rugby to say otherwise. Um, how I, I can say this globally, though, if you, if, if Drickus Duplessis versus Alex Pereira happens at 185 and Drickus sleeps him in South Africa, okay, Cape Town, South Africa, that is going to be the biggest sporting moment to ever occur in the country of South Africa, and Drickus can be your guy. Take the fight with Alex. Now, if I'm giving advice to Alex Pereira, I give him the exact opposite advice. Do not do this fight with Drickus. You, your odds of getting KO'd are exponentially higher. There is more legacy in fighting Tom Aspinall. And even losing against Tom Aspinall, there's more legacy in that. If you beat him, you're you're probably the GOAT, in all honesty. At that point, you are, and the UFC will... Not the UFC. The UFC won't, will say that it's still John. The fans will say it's you because you did something that John wouldn't do, and that is fight Tom Aspinall, and you're going to become a triple champ. Like, it's going to be a whole thing. Alex, at the end of the day, I don't think what people say on YouTube is going to change his mind. I think he is going to fight Drakus. I think he views he wants to be the only dude to beat. Um, Israel Adesanya, or he's going to beat the dude that beat Israel Adesanya. Think about that. Alex Pereira not only beat Izzy, but he beat every dude who's beaten Izzy in MMA. Jan Blahovitz beat him. Alex Pereira beat him. Strickland beat him. He KO'd Strickland. He beat Israel Adesanya. Now, Drickus Duplessis is now one of the few people that have actually been able to beat Adesanya and finished him. Alex Pereira is going to get that get back, and I think that's how it's going to be. Alex Pereira, Drickus Duplessis, mid next year, Cape Town, South Africa. Do not fumble this, Drickus. And that's how I feel about this fight and how Alex Pereira fits into all of this. But there you go. That's going to be the video today. Thank you for the support. Please consider a like, comment, subscribe to Cape Side Combos. It means the absolute most to me. And I will see you all next time. Adios, guys.